After Randall Emmett called 50 Cent Fofty and 50 posted this pic of Randall on the gram, I didn't think it was possible to see Randall Emmett more exposed. But then this LA Times article drops and in it, it talks about Randall's crumbling empire. A dozen lawsuits, allegations of abuse by former assistants, and accusations of sexual favors being exchanged for acting work. There's a lot to dive into in this article, so let's kiki about it. So last year, this New York Mag Vulture article came out about Randall Emmett being the king of the geezer teasers. And essentially it talked about how his production company was built off of these aging action stars like Steven Seagal, Sylvester Stallone, and Bruce Willis. And they would make these sort of cheesy action films that they would sell overseas where they would do really well. So Randall's building his production company, making these cheesy action films. No harm, no foul, right? Except this LA Times article talks about how during the filming of Midnight in the Switchgrass, Randall makes this phone call to his now ex-fiance, Lala Kent, who stars on Vanderpump Rules, and he's supposedly crying and saying, you know, it's so sad. Bruce doesn't know where he is. Now, Randall says that phone call didn't happen, but according to this article, five more movies were made with Bruce Willis. So it implies that Randall knew about Bruce's condition. Now, you know, Bruce Willis has now retired from acting. Um, he was diagnosed with aphasia, which is a cognitive disorder that affects, you know, ability to speak and understand language. And so if Randall was fully aware of Bruce's condition and continued to make movies with him, mm, not such a good look. Now, many people in the industry say that it was sort of this like well-known secret that Bruce's condition was on the decline. And some people might say, hey, Bruce knew his condition was getting worse. He wanted to bank up a lot of money for his family. So no big deal that he wanted to continue to work. And if that's the case, let's hope so. But there were other allegations in this article that were much more dark. One of Randall's former assistants talks about this time he had to retrieve something from Randall's hotel safe. The combination wasn't working. He had to get hotel staff to help him. And when they opened the safe, they all turned away. And when the assistant looked in the safe, there was a giant bag of cocaine. And then he had to take this 30 minute car ride and was terrified of being pulled over because he's a black man and he didn't want to get caught with drugs. Then this other former assistant, a woman, says she gets a message in the middle of the night around 10 p.m. Randall says he has low blood pressure and he needs muscle milk. And she said that when she gets to the house, she sees him just laying naked on the sofa, just covering his privates with a pillow. Again, Randall, through his spokesperson, denies all of these allegations. So there seem to be two camps of people in this LA Times article. The ones I described, like the former assistants who were allegedly being abused and taken advantage of. And then there were the people who sort of knew Randall was sketchy and took advantage of that and would get paid off because of it. So apparently women were signing NDAs and getting random payoff amounts, $2,700 here and $7,500 there just for their silence. And even Lala says she was offered money not to talk about the relationship. She said they were about to start filming Vanderpump Rules. Randall was like, this could get complicated because you know he was still married to his ex Amber Childress at the time. And so he said, go talk to my attorney. And Lala said she went to the attorney's office, took her mother with her. And when they got there, the attorney wanted her to sign an NDA and get paid $14,000 not to talk about the relationship. She said her mother was like, we're done. And Lala says she broke up with Randall at that point and that they didn't get back together until his divorce was finalized. After they got back together, we obviously saw Lala and Randall's relationship play out on Vanderpump Rules, but all seemed to go downhill last October when Randall was caught in pictures with women who weren't Lala. So in October, Randall is in Nashville and some onlookers get video and photos of him going into a hotel with women who obviously weren't Lala. These go viral, Lala finds out. Randall gets back to LA within 24 hours of these photos going viral and Lala demands to see his phone. And now according to her, she snatched the phone from him and he ran and tackled her just to get the phone and was trying to pry it from her hands. And she said that is when she knew that there was a lot more that he was hiding. Now, 
He, of course, denies any of this happening, but whoa, this is the first time we've heard any of these kinds of allegations. Now, this all goes down in the same month that Randall had received a letter from Gloria Allred. Gloria Allred is a very powerful attorney. She's taken on a lot of controversial cases, usually involving women who've been taken advantage of. And she is representing a client that says that Randall offered her acting work in exchange for sexual favors. Randall, of course, denies this, but there was a settlement agreement set for $200,000. Randall denies he signed this. And then allegedly, just months after the supposed settlement, Randall starts sliding into the DMs of strange women he doesn't even know. One woman says that she starts getting messages over and over again for weeks on Instagram. She finally blocks them, doesn't respond to them, and then she starts getting messages on her WhatsApp. She confirms the number is Randall's and she blocks them there. And she said that even though she never responded to any of these messages, his persistence was just frightening. Now, this LA Times article doesn't say what, if anything, will happen with these sexual misconduct allegations, but we do know there's, you know, $25 million in outstanding debts and loans that are being dealt with in these lawsuits with former financiers and insurance company. Um, they did already settle, you know, an over half a million dollar lawsuit with the Writers Guild for some writers that said they didn't get paid on Randall's projects, but I imagine that he will be tied up in the courts for quite a while with all of this. Now, the real question is, Vanderpump Rules is filming for a season 10, hopefully starting any moment now, if not already. Will Lala talk about this on the new season of Vanderpump? Fingers crossed.